Alright guys, Zypho here, and before we start this long play and review video, I'm doing a little intro here just to warn you guys that in the upcoming uh, game footage, there is unfortunately um, some lag and dropped frames in certain parts of the video throughout, unfortunately, and this is due to me recording this on my older PC, um, which was slowly sort of dying a death. Um, and I've since tried to fix this by splicing in frames and stuff like that, but it was taking forever um, because, and it's holding up other long play and review videos. So, so I've decided to uh, give you the video as it is and uh, hopefully it won't hamper your enjoyment too much. But this won't be an issue in the future uh, because I just want to say a quick thank you to all my Patreons and other people who supported me on live streams of tips and donations and all that kind of stuff because that's helped go towards um, and then paying off the brand new PC I got at Christmas with like super duper CPU cores and SSD drives and all that kind of stuff which should mean uh, in the future we won't have the same issues recording uh, footage at full def full high definition 1080p and all that kind of stuff so I just want to say a big thank you to my Patreons and other people who have supported me and uh, so without further ado let's go on, let's get on with the long play and review <laughs> Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Exelon on the Amstrad CPC, released by Houston in 1987, and programmed and made by Raphael Checo, and you can even see his name listed on the back of the box there, and very nice box art it is too. So as we boot this game up, um, I should point out that Raphael Checo is known for Cybernoid 1 and 2, Stormlord and uh, Deliverance. More on him in a little bit. And um, we've got the excellent music here by the ever reliable Dave Rogers, who also did the music for Cybernoid 1 and 2, uh, Nebulous, Stormlord as well, Turrican, Uridium and Zynapse on the Amstrad, so mostly for Houston. And when we see the uh, game, uh, I can tell you that the graphics are done by Nick Jones. I think his most famous games are Afterburner, Eliminator, Ikari Warriors, Stormlord as well, Rampage and many more on the Amstrad. Now this is like a kind of scrolling shoot 'em up and very very nice looking it is too and plays excellently if a little bit slow paced. Um, there are five stages in the game with about 25 screens each. And um, yeah, there's a score bonus at the end of the uh, each stage, uh, which is like the number of lives times a thousand points. And you get ten thousand points for not using the exoskeleton weapon upgrade you can find in the level. And at the end of the level, you also get an extra life up to nine lives. And my god, will you need lives in this game? Now, thankfully, my long play is done without, I believe, losing a life because I'm crazy and silly like that. Uh, we'll just let the music play out in full and then we'll kick off the game. There we go. All right, let's uh, define our keys. And a pretty simple setup, one fire button. And off we go. Now you're moving from left to right. Now if you press the if you lightly press the fire button, um, he will fire a bullet. But if you hold down the fire button, he fires a rocket grenade from his backpack. Although it kind of looks like it's coming coming out of his bottom or something, but uh, 
those are teleporters. I've got some very nice sound effects, and I love the explosion particle effects there as well. It just adds a real extra dimension to the game. And just elevates the quality even more. Now you get plenty of uh, ammo and grenades to start with. Uh, but there are pickups throughout the level, um, but you can run them down quite quite quickly though if you're not careful. And it's knowing when to use um, your bullets and when to use your grenades. And now these 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 turret things are a real swine, so keep ducking and moving, ducking and moving, and shooting all the time. And then you get lots of bonus points when you actually pass that um, turret thing there. Now, sometimes always there may be like two routes through uh, a particular screen. We've gone for the top route here, which needed some very careful jumping. And um, we've got a missile homing in on us there, but if we destroy the radio tower, it destroys the missile. So if you see that radio tower, quickly get a uh, grenade fired at it. And, and also be careful when you walk on a stage. You may have one of those crusher things coming out through the floor. And he instantly his life. Now this thing here, if I pressed, I think it's down or up, uh, I would have upgraded to an exoskeleton. But what we're doing on this first stage is trying to get through without using it because we get a nice uh, bonus at the end of the stage, supposedly according to the instructions. So we'll see if we'll get that. Oh, there's another one of those radio towers. Now often you have to sort of kind of plan your way through the screen and how you do things, but often though you don't have much time to react and make it, make a decision. Oh, this is a really awkward jump there, believe it or not, over those um, bullets being fired from that turret. Uh, one of my least favourite things is that little bubble of those red alien blobs. They kind, of, they kind of swarm around and can, can make for an awkward situation at times. Oh, we've got no one then, but go back and get the points anyway. Use the lift teleporters there. Another radio tower with a homing missile. And there we go. And when we get close to sort of the end of the screen, uh, you may want to sort of um, fire and jump and fire just to make a clear clear your path of uh, enemies that are oncoming but when you get to like the last sort of bit of the screen there they stop spawning often a little jump before um, you get to that end will mean that the enemy will spawn slightly higher up giving you a chance to sort of walk underneath or duck and there we go taking a dangerous jump there and uh, going for the easier route at the top there. And if you get to a certain point they stop spawning, so you probably just pass that pillar and uh, no more enemies will spawn and won't get you as you like exit the stage, thank, <laughs> thank goodness for that. So move slowly, fire up, duck down and fire, keep doing it. When you get close enough it will stop firing anyway. Now these are going to be really awkward to uh, clear, and this is often where you might lose a life. Thankfully, we cleared most of them, and then the last few just moved to the right there. Now with the upgraded exoskeleton suit uh, I talked about earlier, which you can get from that uh, thing you walk through, um, it will allow you to walk uh, over mines unharmed and upgrade your weapon so it uh, now fires, uh, I think, a lot more bullets at once, making it a lot more effective and making it a lot easier to get through the uh, stage and level. Now obviously it's um, screen by screen, there's no scrolling involved, um, but I think that's probably a good thing because um, each screen is its own sort of, even puzzle maybe, you know. Um, I think here we go, this is the end of the level, and let's see if we get the bonus when we walk through the arches. Oh yes, we get a bravery bonus, there we go, that 10,000 points. And we got a little like sort of roulette thing here. 
to get some even extra bonus points. Oops, missed a grenade and wasted one there. We're on level two already. And um, remember, guys, we've got five levels or stages, as they're called. And you can see the zone counter counting down there in the bottom right corner. We've got lives, nine lives to start with. Uh, we got, a, we would have got a bonus life at the end of that level, but uh, we have the maximum of nine. Four grenades left, but we can pick up more from that yellow pickup here. And we also replenished our ammo there. Now I need to do a very careful jump there. It's almost like you feel like you're about to walk off the edge of the platform. That's when you jump. Like literally the last pixel of your boot on some of those jumps. Now we've got no choice but to release those horrible red blobs again. Now there isn't a great deal of variety in the screens as we move between stages really um, but things get a little bit more tougher and um, a little bit more um, well yes <laughs> ingenious and uh, frustrating I suppose because this is a tough game I'm kind of making it look easy because it's a long play and we're trying to do this without losing a life but um, Yes, um, I think if you uh, plan and know what happens on each screen. So I've done this stage by stage and made a note of each zone and sort of what I'm going to be doing in it. That's helped me get through this. But for the casual player, this is a tough, tough game. And as I said, I'm making it look easy when really it isn't. <laughs> Um, Raphael uh, Checo games are known for their difficulty. Anyone who's played Cybernoid 1 and 2, Stormlord, etc. In fact, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to do a long play of Stormlord without like using a cheat to get through it. And unfortunately, guys, I lost my first life there. So my plan of like doing <laughs> this long play about losing a life has been thwarted. So I kind of lied to you, but <laughs> we're not going to lose many. Now that's where you upgrade your uh, uh, to your exoskeleton. I'm going to try and go for the bonus again and be a little bit cheeky, and we'll do it on the on the uh, later stages. Uh, yes, you have to destroy that laser to get through it. Don't walk into it, whatever you do. Uh, we start seeing some newer enemies. We've got like these sort of mutant bees, maybe. They look a bit like bees to me, anyway. Now, uh, Raphael, he um, basically um, made this for both the Spectrum and Amstrad pretty much simultaneously. Uh, I think it's probably argued that the Spectrum was the lead platform. Because I th uh, from what I heard in interviews of uh, Raphael, that um, uh, he seems to suggest that he converted it to the Amstrad uh, uh, after the Spectrum one. However, um, I think they play pretty much identically, just the Amstrad's got more colours. So no, no disrespect to spec owners. I probably I probably prefer it on the Amstrad, but it plays uh, excellently on both machines. I've never played the Commodore 64 version though, sadly. But yeah, um, Exelon really was the game that made Raph a uh, superstar, and he was heavily promoted in the magazines as the new young wonder programmer. And of course, Mewson were more than happy to capitalise on this and push that as well. Hence why we see his name on the back of the uh, box art as well. To let people know this is a Ra uh, this is a Raphael Checo game. And that would stay throughout his career on uh, doing 8-bit games. And uh, yes, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Checo, he was, you know, he also did Cybernoid One and Two, which came after Exelon, Stormlord, and Deliverance. I think his first one was Equinox, um, and maybe before that, Cop Out. Uh, but yes, um, he did some great games on the uh, Amstrad and Spectrum, definitely. Uh, but in the early nineties, um, I believe he left Houston and joined uh, Vivid Image and completed his first 16-bit uh, Amiga game there called First Samurai. 
um, which was followed by the imaginatively titled Second Samurai. Uh, there was also Street Racer for the uh, Snares and Mega Drive. Uh, a few a few years later, I think probably in the mid nineties, and after he left to form form his own studio, uh, King of the Jungle, and um, Agent Armstrong, I think was uh, one of the more notable games that made it to the PlayStation One at the time. But things proved tough in the industry, and by two thousand and three, he quit the game industry and became a web developer specialising in JavaScript plugins. Where a few years ago, he did mention that he was developing a new indie game in his own spare time, but I can't seem to find much more about that. Um, I think he was talking about that in two thousand and fourteen, so four years ago. So. Who knows if that's still in the works or not. Now we'll just try and get rid of that turret first. It gives us a bit more breathing room because it's going to be really awkward with those red blobs. And this is probably where you're going to end up losing a life. And sometimes it comes down to a little bit of luck um, with a, where those red blobs go. Now as you notice there guys, I mean, throughout this video we had a bit, quite a bit of uh, lag unfortunately. And there's not much, unfortunately, I can do about that um, without spending many, many hours trying to splice in footage and all that kind of stuff. Which is a shame, uh, so I do apologise for that, but uh, thanks to your guys' support of, of me and my channel on Patreon and streams and stuff like that. Um, I have a new PC now, and uh, I'm sure I won't be experiencing lag like we just did there. And let's, let's basically drop frames in the uh, recording there. And obviously I try and get this uh, recorded in 1080p and uh, the best resolution possible and highest quality possible for you guys now. In fact, there's quite a few of my older videos that are in like 480p and not like brilliant quality that I'd love to go back and redo at some point. But uh, I don't want to be duplicating content too much on my channel. There, there we go. Um, so no more. Uh, let's focus on the game. And um, what can I tell you more about the game? Uh, well, there's actually no backstory at all to the game. Nothing. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, the in the instructions at the back of the box literally have no story for the game. Like you play as the character John Spaceman, and he has got to rescue the planet Zarg from aliens or whatever. No, nothing at all. So no messing about. Just jump straight in and start blasting, basically. Oh, and uh, yes, I should mention, for those of you that need that little bit of extra help, there is a uh, cheat mode in the game to get infinite lives. Um, and to do that, you just need to redefine the keys on the uh, menu screen uh, by typing the word Zorba. That's Z for Zebra, O for Oscar, R for Romeo, uh, B for Bravo, A for Alpha. And uh, you'll hear a sound. Then to find the keys to your choice, and you'll have infinite lives in the game. So there you go, guys. Hopefully that will help you out if you're having trouble with uh, this game. Now there's one of the booths there to upgrade ourselves. And I'm not going to do it this time. But we will later on, I promise, and you'll, you'll be able to see the upgraded uh, weapon which fires, I think it's dual shots actually, fires two bullets at a time and you're able to walk over mines and walk through the uh, crushers that come up through the ground. This one's a little bit tough, gotta watch your head because the uh, sprites do clip through the background there. But that'll stop spawning now. If I had upgraded, this would have made it a lot easier <laughs> with the exoskeleton. Hmm. Just contemplating what to do here. See if I can jump and fire a rocket. Or grenade, sorry. I couldn't. Um, so we'll have to take them on here. And we might as well do both at once and blast. Oh, <laughs> and I screwed up. 
Never mind. That's my second life loss, I think, so far, isn't it, guys? But yeah. I said I wouldn't talk about non-game related things, but I just want to say it's really nice to get back to my roots of doing like a proper long play and review video like I've always done. And um, I may uh, end up doing a few more over the next few months um, with a uh, baby on the way. Rather than committing to lots of live streams or whatever. Anywho. Nice, some ammo replenishments there. Oh, and a sneaky crusher there was you might not have expected because it pops up quite late. So that's Mr. Checo there being rather uh, sneaky, <laughs> I think. Yeah, sadly the like the backgrounds don't really sort of change between levels and stages, so it's pretty much the same. Perhaps my only minor nigger would have been, as you move between stages, perhaps like the background colours could have changed or something. So instead of being on the surface, you're now inside a, I don't know, a, a base or something like that, or inside a space shuttle and its corridors. Hmm. But I'm nitpicking there. I think a further nitpicking would uh, nitpicker would be. Um, hmm. It might have been nice to have some in-game music to go with. I mean, the sound effects. I do like the sound effects. But um, I think maybe some in game music would have just like really crowned it off nicely. Oh, yeah, and I haven't mentioned that. Like, I love that the fact that there's like a trail on your rocket grenades. And I think that's like a really nice touch. And it shows that the programmer uh, is going the extra mile. He didn't need to put in those extra effects. I know they're only minor, and if you're a modern gamer watching it, watching this and never seen an Amstrad game before, you'd be like, what are you on about? Oh god, I died there. <laughs> that was a really weak death. But yeah, if you're, you know, if you've never seen an Amstrad game before, and this is like you're watching this for the first time, you'd be like, what are you blabbering on about? Trail on a, trail on a missile? Why does that matter? Well, you know, <laughs> a lot of games from this era, a lot of programmers wouldn't have bothered, probably. It would have just gone like, there's the rocket sprite, off it goes. But no, there's a nice little trail put on that. And I do like that. Again, it's just going the extra mile. And I really, really appreciate that in um, when I'm doing these reviews. And I always kind of focus in on like the little details like that. Because it shows the programmer cares and the company cares. And the company has given them time and space to uh, make a really good quality product. And not just banging it out, you know, like, I don't know. If you work for US Gold, for example, they would have given him like, all right, you've got to do this game in like three weeks. And if you get to the end of three weeks and uh, it's, you know, not finished to the standard you hope, you know, tough crap. The game's going out regardless. <laughs> so well done, Houston, as well, because they they did produce some really quality original titles. And from what, from what I hear as well from interviews with programmers, you know, they were pretty much left to get on. And do do it, you know. They'd come perhaps come to the you know the Houston bosses with uh, you know, an idea for a game, and they'll go, yeah, that sounds good. Off you go, go and do it. And I think they'll give them the time within a reasonable time frame to get it done, uh, and leave them to their own devices. Obviously, you can't do that in this day and age. Oh, and even like towards the end of the 80s everything then was like a properly planned group effort with tight schedules and all that kind of stuff and larger teams so the days of one man band gaming um, has long gone but has it? I mean like, obviously now we've got the uh, we've got quite a, a quite an active indie market um, mobile gaming you know, one-man team programmers have come back a little bit, and that's really, really nice to see. I think that's inspired Mr. Uh, Raphael uh, Checo. As I mentioned earlier, he was talking about making a new game for the, you know, just independently or maybe for the mobile market in his spare time. 
Anyway, I'm kind of rambling now. So yeah, we're probably just over two thirds of the way through now, guys. Actually, probably further than that, actually. Not far to go. But yeah, jump, jump and shoot, jump and shoot. That's a good tactic. I want to jump just before the end, usually, but um, I, I suspected there wouldn't be a spawn on, on that screen. And I hate these turret things. I mean, thankfully, with the exoskeleton upgrade, you're, you're gonna fire, you can fire twin bullets, so you don't need to be doing that ducking and shooting, duck, sh duck shoot, stand shoot type uh, mechanic. And I was quite lucky there, I didn't get hit by the crusher. So yeah, guys, don't be daft like me. Get the upgrade, and, and like screw trying to get a better score. Because really, who cares about high scores? Unless it's like Donkey Kong or something and you're in King of Kong. <laughs> There's the upgrade booth. And we've gone and got we've done it now. There we go. We've got the upgrade, we've got the exoskeleton. We can now walk through those crushes. We can now walk over mines, which you'll see in a bit. And now we fire twin bullets, which which is gonna make our job a heck of a lot easier. And it only counts as one bullet from your am ammunition supply as well, so that's that, that's really nice. It doesn't drain your ammo really quickly. But yeah, you can now walk over mines. Without dying. Now, I think according to the instructions, if I remember, when you do get this exoskeleton upgrade, um, apparently it's supposed to make you move a lot slower. But to be honest, guys, I can't notice the difference in the speed of the character movement. I don't think even the sprite changes. No. Oh well, never mind. Perhaps it was like an idea in the in a design document or something like that that Raphael never got chance to uh, implement. Even when you reach those turrets, if you walk away from them, go back, they do um, reactivate, so watch out for that. That nearly caught me out there. But yeah, guys, if you haven't checked out any of uh, Raphael uh, uh, Checo's other games, you've got to check out Cybernoid 1 and 2. Again, they are really, really, really tough. Cybernoid 2, I have done a live long play of. Um, it was part of a live stream um, uh, about a month or two ago. Um, I think it was part two of like Impossible Amstrad CPC games, I think it was. And um, well, I didn't do very well in it. We got to the end, but like I had to use a lot of snapshot reloads. But like, if you're impressed by the graphics here and like all the particle effects and stuff like that, you're going to love Cybernoid 1 and 2. Definitely check out Stormlord as well. Um, by the same guy. Again, it plays rather similar to Exelon in a way, um, but a lot more platforming involved. And it's like stunningly presented. And of course, a bit of a stir at the time because there's like some slight nudity in the game. And um, yes, I think there were some angry letters written into Amstrad Action Magazine at the time. I can't remember if it appeared as a demo on the cover tape or not, but they certainly reviewed it. Yes, it did appear on the cover tape. Oh, actually, I'm remembering now. They had to censor the boobs. I mean, it was only a side on, and I don't, I don't think you saw a nipple or anything like that. But, um, but yes, that had to be censored, I remember, on when they put the game on the cover tape. I don't think Mr. Checo meant it, meant it to be anything sleazy or anything like that. He said it was meant to be pretty. <laughs> I don't know. But it's kind of surprising to see a bit of nudity in, in a uh, full price release game from a, you know, from one of the big publishers. If I'd bought that back in the day as a, as a kid, I'd be <laughs> I'd be well so shocked and surprised. But hey, no well. But those other games are definitely worth checking out. There's also a sequel to Stormwolf called Deliverance. And that's, I think that was his last game for the 8-bit 
the work, at least for the Amstrad, I think. Which essentially is Storm Lord 2. Yeah, time in, in between those crushes is quite difficult. Yeah, really lovely sound effects though. Really lovely graphics. I think I'm coming to like summing, summing up a review here because I think this is the final stage. And, ah oh, yes, we'll get the upgrade here as well from the booth to the exoskeleton. There we go, twin weapons. Yeah, summing up a review time I think, guys. Um, I mean, the graphics are really lovely. Lovely and colourful. Very well detailed for Mo Zero graphics, which is basically chunky pixels and lots of colours and screen available from the Amstrad's palette, which is gorgeous, as we all know. Um, lovely music on the title screen. Sadly, there's no music in game. That may have, may have elevated things a little bit higher, but the sound effects are really good, so I can't really complain about that. Um, the gameplay's fun. Yes, it is a little bit slow, but I think it's deliberately slow. Because you kind of like planning and having to try and make snap decisions very quickly on how you're going to get through the screen. And if you're not quick enough, you'll end up getting stuck. For example, if there's a homing missile and you haven't noticed the radio, the, uh, radio tower quick enough. And uh, yeah, it's also nice to have like basically two different routes sometimes through a screen. Will the top route or the bottom route be easier or harder? And what you'll end up encountering. Hmm. Anyway, but yeah, I think I'm going to some um, final review score for this. Um, I mean, it's really close to like a 9 out of 10, 90 percent a game. It really is. I think I would have probably, probably given it something like 89 percent if I did it in like percentages. Review score. I don't think it's quite like what Amsterdam Action would call a master game in the 90% range. Um, very, very, very close to. It's just that I think it's. It can be a bit overly tough and frustrating and thus a little bit off putting. I mean, you don't want games to be too easy, but, um, but maybe more variety in the levels and a, a more friendlier difficulty curve from the start. Maybe longer levels. And uh, yeah, I think the slow pacedness of it is nice. It works for the game. It doesn't it doesn't scream excitement to me. But all the uh, like the particle effects and explosions, that kinda makes up for it as well. So it's a balancing act, but I think like I'll give it like an 89%. So um, so it's kind of basically an eight and a half out of ten from me for Exelon. But I know most of you uh, love this game a lot and will probably be wanting me to give it like nine out of ten or whatever. Um, I just picked a few minor faults, but like I've not really encountered any like bugs in the game. Um, the game's never crashed on me. It's expertly entirely programmed throughout. Yeah, there's a little bit of slowdown as well when there's too many uh, things happening on screen. But hey, look, it's the Amstrad. Same on the Spectrum as well. It's asking asking a lot of the machine. But yeah, I'm basically nitpicking. Hmm. Some of you may prefer the faster run and gun of, like, say, like Gryzor or something like that. But if you're looking for more of a slower pace thing, Exelon, Exelon is your game on the Amstrad. And there we go, guys. We have beaten the game. Congratulations, you have proven your abilities. Oh, God. Too quick for me to read. And uh, I wasn't hitting the fire button there. Um, but sadly, no real ending to the game. Just like a little text screen congratulating you on your mission, basically. And that's your lot. And then it basically, here, guys, it's wrapped around to, like, basically stage one. So I'm just going to kill myself. Uh, lose my life and then uh, go to the high score table so yeah guys eight and a half out of ten I feel bad about that actually maybe you ought to give it nine out of ten hmm but it would have been like an 89% I think from me yeah so there you go
Um, I'd like to do more of uh, Mr. Checo's games. Um, maybe I might check out Cybernoid 1 on a, a live stream at some point. Um, Stormlord, blimey, I'd like to do a long play about that. that it's a tough game. From what, from what I remember, um, there was a guy that used to do a lot of long plays on YouTube. I think Axelino, I think that's his uh, YouTube name. He did a long play of uh, Stormlord. Um, but I think he had to use cheats in the end to finish it. Now, that's quite surprising. <laughs> mm, but there you go. Um, so there we Yeah, yeah. Might check out more of his games on my channel at some point. Probably in a, probably in a live stream of Impossible Games or something. So yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let you uh, listen to the music one more time. Before we finish. Uh, but... Thanks for watching, guys. Um, remember to, um, um, if you haven't subscribed, subs please do subscribe and click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you get notifications of when I start live streaming or um, there's a new video that gets uploaded. Um, give us a like on the video if you can, guys. I put a lot of work and effort into this one. Uh, leave a comment. As always, I look forward to reading your comments and I'll try and reply to each and every one of them um, within the first week or two. And yeah, um, so yeah, plenty more um, Amstrad related live streams coming up as well, guys. So a lot of our information comes up on my Twitter and Facebook page. You'll find links in the description below. And I'm easily found at just Google's iPhone, basically. Because <laughs> thankfully I've been able to use that username for all those platforms. But there we go, guys. That was Exelon. Long playing review. Eight and a half, maybe nine out of ten. Eighty-nine percent, whatever. Um, definitely a game well worth checking out if you've never played it before I believe it was great on the Spectrum and I, th I believe it was really good on the Commodore 64 as well but I've never seen or played it sadly uh, yes so I'm not sure I've got anything else to mention guys so thanks for watching and I will see you all again very very soon hopefully all right, guys. Thanks very much. Zypho, out. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.